Now on nightside, a deadly stabbing in Spokane Valley. The details as police look for the suspect. Take advantage of some warm, sunny weather this weekend. I'll tell you about some changes to cooler, possibly wetter weather in the first alert forecast. And we sat down with the candidates for Spokane County Prosecutor. You're watching 4 News Now, Nightside. We start with breaking news tonight. Police are searching for the person who stabbed and killed a man in Spokane Valley. Good evening, I'm Aaron Luna. And I'm Kirsten O'Connor. Police say two men were fighting in a neighborhood near Boone and Dorn Court. One man stabbed the other and took off. That victim died at the hospital. Trying to uh, figure out what the relationship is between the suspect and the victim, what led up to this, how they know each other, um, all, the, all the things that are going to help us in our investigation. Police are looking for a man in his 20s or 30s. He is Caucasian, has dark curly hair. He was wearing black pants, a gray hoodie, and he has uh, that hoodie has shoulders that are a darker color and a hood on it. Police say it's possible he may be hurt. Anyone with information is asked to call Crime Check. That number is right there on your screen, 509-456-2233. We're uncovering new information tonight from the Bloomsday office following the resignation of Reese Director John Neal and two board members. The former Bloomsday board director wrote about what he called toxic leadership within the organization. We sat down with a former board member who talked about the high turnover rate at Bloomsday in the past 18 months. Gary Markham dedicated 18 years to being a Bloomsday board member. He called recent leadership at Bloomsday dysfunctional, specifically calling out board president Dory Whitford. He says in all of the years he's worked with Neil, there was nothing that warranted his removal from office and would challenge any board member to show evidence to the contrary. We've been profitable the last three years. We came through a pandemic. Everything seemed to be moving in the right direction. It's just disappointing to me that it came down to personal issues because that's what I believe it is. I would challenge anyone on still on that board to hear all the, hear, here's what John did that was egregious and worthy, you know, made it necessary to let him go. We reached out to Dory Whitford to see if she had a response to these claims. We have not heard back yet. The WashDOT is now responding to the city of Spokane, called for a chronic nuisance abatement agreement over Camp Hope earlier this month. The Department of Transportation says it rejects the city holding WashDOT responsible for the situation at Camp Hope. The state agency maintains the fault lies with leaders of the city for failing to provide enough beds, housing, and social and health services for people who are homeless in Spokane. WashDOT is now calling the city's chronic nuisance notice illegal and is questioning the constitutionality of that abatement goal. Well, the Department of Transportation says city timelines, which are coming up in just a few weeks, are not realistic. Washington says the city failed to work with the state when this camp started at around 100 people back in December, and that continued failure to work together on solutions has led that camp to so much growth. Washington is now requesting that the city of Spokane withdraw its chronic nuisance notice. The state agency says if that does not happen, it reserves the right to take legal action against the city. A man who claimed self-defense in a 2018 deadly stabbing in Spokane is behind bars tonight. He's now being called a person of interest in a double murder on the East Coast. According to court documents obtained by 4 News Now, in May of 2018, Logan Clegg told officers he was attacked by a man while walking to work in downtown Spokane. He said he stabbed that man until he stopped fighting, then he walked away. That man died. Police never charged Clegg with a crime. Now Clegg is a person of interest in a case involving a married couple killed in April in Concord, New Hampshire. Seven people were shot, five killed last night, the scene spanning over two miles in the capital of North Carolina. A 15-year-old is in custody tonight. The suspect is in critical condition at the hospital as authorities try to pin down a motive. New on Nightside, ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. We're learning more about the victims of America's latest mass shooting. Seven people shot, five of them killed, when police say a 15-year-old gunman opened fire Thursday evening on the streets of Raleigh, North Carolina. My heart is heavy because we don't have answers as to why this tragedy occurred. 
52-year-old Nicole Connors was killed along with her dog Sammy. 49-year-old Susan Carnatz, a mother of three, also gunned down. 34-year-old Mary Marshall was a Navy veteran set to be married later this month. Off-duty police officer Gabriel Torres, a Marine, killed on his way to work. The youngest victim, 16-year-old James Thompson, a high school junior. Really scared. It's scary. We've been here for like 25 years and it's, it's too much. Frantic 911 calls coming in as the suspect began shooting. White kid ran out here with a shotgun. He shot somebody. He then made his way to a popular nature trail. The shootings occurred um, in the streets, in the neighborhood, and then the suspect fled towards the Greenway. Police urging residents to stay indoors as they race to capture the gunman. Authorities say after a long standoff, they took him into custody with serious injuries. Police planning to release an initial report in five days. So far, no word on a motive. A law enforcement official telling ABC News the suspected shooter is related to one of those killed. President Biden has released a statement saying enough is enough, touting the bipartisan gun law signed into law in June, but added more must be done, reiterating his calls for an assault weapons ban. That is unlikely to happen in this Congress or the next if Republicans take over after the midterm elections. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, shattered glass, their belongings scattered. This is what employees at Sweet Frostings in downtown Spokane walk into when they're done with work. Sweet Frostings says it is struggling to keep employees because its parking lot is a hot spot for crime. And now, on top of paying to use that parking lot, they're trying to help repair employees' windows that have been smashed. The bake shop says they've dealt with crime as long as they've been in business downtown. But they say that in the past few weeks, it has gotten a lot worse. They've tried to set up security cameras but they can't because they don't own the parking lot. So if you walk into their store, you'll see there's a tip jar on the counter and they're trying to raise $3,000 to pay for damaged windows. Parking in diamond parking lots, um, which is everything that we have available to us. So if we had another place to park, we would. Um, but we probably, as a company, as a whole, pay probably upwards of $2,000 a month. Um, or more uh, to park in these private parking lots that give us absolutely no protection. Diamond Parking Lot owns the lot that Sweet Frosting's employees park in. 4 News Now has reached out to Diamond Parking for comment and we have not heard back. Certainly hasn't been the kind of cuddle up and cozy weather we're used to during the fall. I think you can cuddle up and do that whenever you want, no matter the temperature. Aaron's likely to cuddle <laughs> anytime. Yeah, you know, early morning, hit the patio, uh, still kind of brisk uh, out there, Chris. That is for sure. The cool mornings uh, cuddle up, but yeah, you definitely need to dress in layers because we have more summer-like weather on the way for the weekend in the afternoons. Sunny, warm Saturday, a little on the breezy side. Wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour. Hopefully that will keep the wildfire smoke dispersed. 70s for several days in the forecast. We should easily break the record for the number of 70 degree or higher days in Spokane, but there are changes coming. Temperatures right now are in the 40s and 50s around the region. We're cooling down quickly. We are heading to overnight lows in the 30s and 40s. Once again, these temperatures are above average. Meanwhile, we've had some clouds moving through uh, today, the second part of the day and into the evening. Those clouds will be clearing with mostly clear skies overnight. Saturday, beautiful day for your fall fun. We're going to be sunny with a high of 75. Breezy conditions again with wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour. I'll be back with the second half of your weekend forecast and tell you more about those changes on the way. That's in just a few minutes, Aaron. Oh, the dreaded change. Changes. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> Tickets for the November 20th Gonzaga versus Kentucky game go on sale October 28th. Mark your calendars. You can get yours at SpokaneArena.com starting at 10 a.m. Prices start at $65. That doesn't seem bad, right? The November 20th game is the first in a six-year series between the Zags and the Kentucky Wildcats. Tip-off begins at 4.30 p.m. at the Spokane Arena. But can we actually <laughs> get the tickets? 
Alex is here with us to talk about refresh, how quickly refresh, refresh. they're yeah. going to sell out. I mean, some of us will be able to go there um, that are going to be covering the game. It's a little different <laughs> oh, than, you know, oh, maybe oh. actually. Wow, humble going brag, the, not so you humble. Know, <laughs> you know, you know, there are in there. perks. <laughs> it, no, it's, there's definitely perks to the job. But yeah, this is going to sell it within five minutes. So make sure you got good Wi Fi, your phone's charged, or maybe just go to the box office. I don't know what they, kind of deals they have. I don't know. Does anyone go to the box office? I don't still? know. I was just wondering. Is that no. anybody, I think they can, though. It's They'll right across be the street. gone before you even step out your door. Right. But the <laughs> hottest tick in town, it's actually not here in Spokane. It's over on the west side in Seattle because on Monday, the Seattle Mariners' uh, ticket prices for their game three against Houston tomorrow averaging about $335. Well, they're going to have their backs against the wall, though, because it's such a hot ticket item. Houston taking the first two of the series by combined three runs, so not much separating these two teams at this point. And the bats of the M's have largely been keeping them in these games. They're averaging better than five and a half runs per game in the postseason. That's one area that the manager, Scott Service, hopes gets them back into the series. I think we've had guys, you've seen it throughout the year, they get hot for extended periods of time and they carry us, you know, maybe two or three at a time. But just the quality of bat up and down the lineup has been outstanding. A tribute, a tribute to our guys and, the, you know, the game planning, they, they've all bought into nine versus one. Them together, them nine have a better chance of beating that one guy on the mound than just one guy individually trying to hit a couple homers. Um, they clearly have bought into that, understanding that's what leads to winning baseball, certainly at this time of year. It's going to be another busy day there for these two teams. First pitch just after one in the afternoon. If the M's are able to extend the series, they'll play in the afternoon again on Sunday. And that's going to be the same time as the Seahawks matchup in Arizona against Arizona. So I do not envy the people of downtown Seattle because that is going to be quite the mess uh, with about close to 100,000 people between oh, two stadiums. It could be fun. It could yeah. Think of the energy, the excitement. Uh, Unless know, someone I don't know. loses. The claustrophobia. <laughs> Here on the east side, we got a busy week as well. We got, you know, GU women uh, tipping off their fan fest. Eastern plays at home against Sacramento State. Uh, over down in Corvallis, the Cougs looking for their fifth win of the season against the Beavers. Idaho plays Montana in their rivalry game. So, pretty busy weekend in sports and don't go anywhere because we do have Friday Night Sports Extra coming up. We're starting to get down to it. We're like final few weeks here. Oh, that's right. That's yeah, things go by so quickly. I know, when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. That is true. Well, we also sat down with the two candidates for Spokane County Prosecutor ahead, what they want you to vote for and why when we come back. Track live radar on the 4 News Now weather app. Save 15% off now. SpokaneRainGutter.com you hear stories every single day of people being mugged or shot. I've been accosted by homeless people and drug addicts. It is absolutely not safe. We're lifelong Democrats. I have voted for Patty Murray many times. At least five times. But I just can't do it this time. We're voting for Tiffany Smiley. Vote Tiffany Smiley. Tiffany Smiley is the right person for the job. She gives me hope. I'm Tiffany Smiley and I approve this message. The nonstop sirens. This is why you don't vote for Patty Murray. Never used to be like this. How would you like to buy a vehicle for $20? Well, this Saturday, you can at all three Cal locations as they celebrate their 20-year anniversary by flipping a coin, heads or tails, to see who gets to buy a vehicle for 20 bucks. A lot of politicians like to talk big, but where's the action? Al French is a leader we can trust, and Al's results speak for themselves. Al has won funding for our roads to keep goods moving. As costs skyrocket, Al has pledged no county property tax increase. His opponent wants to give criminals a get-out-of-jail-free card, while Al dedicated more funding to the Sheriff's Department to keep families safe. I'm Al French. I'm asking for your vote so I can keep getting results for you. It's like the Avengers have arrived. <laughs> Yeah, to have some fun. The buzziest late show on Hollywood Boulevard. Jimmy Kimmel Live. Is there anything he won't brag about? Democrats in Washington are threatening our way of life. Reckless spending fueling inflation. Shutting down energy production here at home. A push to defund the police. Kathy McMorris Rogers is fighting every day to stop them and protect Eastern Washington. Cutting spending to curb inflation unleashing American energy production, and making sure law enforcement has the resources they need. Kathy McMorris Rogers, our voice. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers, and I approve this message. 4 News Now is brought to you by Just Between Friends. 
Now to our For the People election coverage. A big election we've been telling you about is the Spokane County prosecutor race. Whoever's elected will shape how the county fights crime and holds people accountable. Two candidates are trying to earn your vote. Esther Bauer introduces us to who's running and their vision for that position. Larry Haskell is the current county prosecutor elected in 2014. He says being tough on crime is key to safety. The fact is that the soft on crime, the, the more gentle approach, the alternatives, uh, and we use those here, but to the extent that my opponent is advocating, those jurisdictions are doing very poorly. Look at King County, look at Seattle. His opponent, Deb Conklin, says what he's suggesting isn't working because crime rates are still rising. If we want to stop the revolving door, if we want to reduce crime, if we want to have safer neighborhoods, we have to address the root causes of crime. That means we have to be more interested in using the drug court, the veterans court, the mental health court. Haskell blames a lot of the issues on Olympia, saying if reelected, he would lobby for more power to be put back in the hands of law enforcement and will take a stronger stance on drugs. I'm going to try to lobby the legislature to put mandatory treatment in regardless of whether they make it a misdemeanor or whether they make it a felony. Conklin says she would try and help the capacity issue at the county jail by using pre-trial release programs and monitoring people from home. We have ways to keep the community safe and also reduce the jail population and help people. Conklin says the office has lost the trust of the people. The reason I'm running in this race is because it is critically important that the people of Spokane County have faith in their prosecuting attorney. Numerous media outlets reported on racist comments Haskell's wife made in the past, something he still says doesn't influence his ability to be fair. I apologize for those comments, but they're, they're not the policy of the office. They're not my policy, uh, and they never will be my policy. This current pastor wants to unseat the current prosecutor. Both say they are ready for the role and prepared to lead the largest law firm in eastern Washington. Esther Bauer, 4 News Now. As a reminder, you can submit all your questions and concerns about the midterm elections and find our full voter guide. Just go to kxy.com slash for the people. Two supermarket giants are ready to join forces. Kroger could merge with Albertsons in a $24.6 billion deal, creating one of the largest grocery store chains in the country. They are hoping it'll make them more competitive with giants like Amazon and Walmart. Our high temperature today of 73 degrees, 59 is our average high. This is the 14th day this month. We've hit 70 degrees or higher. 17 days is the record. I think we'll break that record very easily. Tonight, mostly clear skies. Starting to see our wind shift out of the northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour, 46 for an overnight low. Tomorrow, northeast wind gusts up to 20 miles per hour, 75 degrees our high temperature. Here's a look at our forecast, and we have a ridge of high pressure in place. We are on the eastern edge of that ridge, and a disturbance working its way down is going to help facilitate that shift in winds and that breeze tomorrow. But high pressure builds back in for Sunday for more sun warm weather with light winds. Uh, the only concern with that is we are seeing that wildfire smoke build up, particularly right around the fires burning in the Cascades, as well as Boundary County. Here's our smoke forecast. And right now, winds are fairly light out of the northeast, but we'll watch those winds pick up tomorrow. That should help disperse the wildfire smoke uh, through the day on Saturday. As those winds begin to die back down, we'll see it build Building back up again in the usual places. Air quality alerts still in effect for Chelan County, uh, OMAC, the Okanagan Valley, also in Boundary County. Our high temperatures tomorrow well above average once again. In fact, more than 15 degrees above average. 80 in Grand Coulee, 80 in Lewiston, 75 in Pullman, Spokane, 76 tomorrow in Colville. Your planning forecast will be just as sunny and warm on Sunday, but with light winds staying warm right on through the middle of the week and beyond. Looks like we'll start to see some changes by the end of next work week, possibly seeing some mountain showers, and it looks like a better chance of rain and slightly cooler weather as we head into next weekend. Not 
back down to average yet, but out of the 70s. Beautiful pick of the night tonight. Thank you to Ted Moss. Uh, you know, we saw the beautiful sunset here at the station, but with the Priest River in the foreground, that makes it a little more special than Boone Avenue and some uh, power lines. Just gorgeous. Thank you so much, Ted, for sharing your beautiful view this evening. Aaron? Yeah, but those power lines are our power lines. Th yes, that is true. That's our <laughs> Boone Avenue. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Well, the IRS is reaching out to more than 9 million Americans who may be missing out on COVID-related tax benefits. Eligible taxpayers could receive five-figure payments, including stimulus money, if they qualify. The Internal Revenue Service is focusing on families and individuals who haven't filed a tax return yet for 2021. Millions of low-income Americans in particular do not appear to be taking advantage of the temporary tax provisions Congress approved during the pandemic. The IRS is reminding them that they don't have to have big earnings to benefit and that they can still file even if they miss the April deadline. Starting this week, letters will be going out to remind taxpayers that they need to take action before the November 17th deadline. It's Friday. You know what that means? Some sort of Marvel reference. And Alex Crusetti! <laughs> oh, Yay! Whoa. Let's send it over. Called out, Alex. I know. Well, I don't got anything. Well, they say, like, Superman works alone. This might be the last day that Superman gets to work alone on this show because maybe we've got a surprise for you next week, but that's for another time. Anyway, we got a lot of good highlights here as we're getting down to the business end of the season and some really good games in the Inland Northwest. Stay with us. Download the 4 News Now app today. This is another one of those surprise medical bills you get in the mail. I've gotten them. You've gotten them. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers. With inflation crushing our families, we need to put a stop to these. I support requiring hospitals, insurers, and doctors to disclose their prices so you can know the real cost and can shop around for the best care. I approve this message because no one likes surprises, especially this kind. Whitworth's Health Science program is expanding in a big way. And now's the time to make plans to advance your career by joining us in one of our emerging advanced degree programs. Our 38,000 square foot health science building will house simulation labs and classrooms that resemble actual clinical environments and allow for interprofessional collaboration. Everything you need to take the next steps in your career and help people live better lives. Learn more today. Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning is your family-owned and operated number one HVAC contractor in the Northwest. Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning would like to introduce our own carbon reduction program. Buy a new energy-efficient furnace from Bill's Heating and receive a matching air conditioner with installation absolutely free. No hidden fees, no conditions, no exceptions. Buy a furnace, get a free AC from Bill's Heating and Air Conditioning. Call today for estimates and repairs. Joe Biden's open borders have threatened our neighborhoods and our children's safety. Fentanyl-related deaths have increased right here in Idaho. Gang members transport fentanyl and other dangerous drugs into our schools and communities. This has got to stop. I'm Mike Crapo. I approve this message. It's time we control the borders and shut down the pipeline of drugs and violence into Idaho. 4 News Now is brought to you by Finley Downtown Toyota.
into another edition of Friday Night Sports Extra. If you can believe it, we are in the business end of the high school football season. For Idaho, just two weeks left in the regular season. And for Washington, just three. So if you're winning in October, that's good news. Just like the Seattle Mariners here. So the playoffs coming up soon. Well, a couple of playoff teams, of potentially playoff teams, I should say, facing off out in the valley between Gonzaga Prep and Central Valley. A little bit of seeding going on here this one is an absolute vital game let's get to it and this one was a big one the game of the week well we're gonna pick things up on the opening drive Gonzaga prep driving right down the field and they get inside the 10 yard line as Lilo McKayla gets in for the touchdown run Central Valley comes out throwing though Dylan Gravel with a pass to Hudson Dayton for a nice little gain there but their drive is gonna stall so the Bears still looking for some points at this point second quarter now Central Valley on the attack Dylan Gravel is going to throw to the corner of the end zone for Caden Harkin, but Kai Van Cooler wrestles it away. Refs are going to have a little meeting there and award it to Gonzaga Prep. So they take over at the 20 yard line. Bullpeps going to get a little bit of points here before the half. JoJo Shortwell throws a little quick pass to Bo Howell. Nice little juke, and he is in for the score. However, this one was a lot more close because in the second half, Central Valley came back to tie it up at 21 apiece. Gonzaga Prep scores the late touchdown, and they survive. Still one loss on the season, still at the top of the GSL at this point. Now, let's go up to Union Stadium. We had a good one between uh, Lewis and Clark and Meade. Start of the second quarter, and Tigers attempting the field goal, but a bad snap leads to the block. Coley Thomas is there for the short return, and the Panthers are in business here. No points to be had in that first quarter, but no worries there. Ensuing me drive, Colby Danielson's going to take it himself up the middle for the first down. Panthers now inside the red zone looking for those points. They're going to get it a few plays later on the one-yard line. Danielson with a QB sneak. Yep, he's somewhere at the bottom of the pile there. Yep, there he is. First touchdown of the game, Panthers lead 7-0. Next offensive possession, Colby Price rips a long run, breaking a couple of tackles, earning that first down in the red zone again. Then Panthers stand on the ground. Johnny Tallarico takes the handoff, cuts it outside, and just gets past the plane. And he's in, extending that lead. There he is. And, oh, oh, Danielson said, there's the camera. Waves the kiss goodnight. And that one, do it. Meade wins this one big, 37-7. This sets up a very interesting matchup in a couple weeks with Mount Spokane. Both teams just one loss. So they are both going to be going to the playoffs more likely than not. Got a couple games coming up after the break. Stay with us. Stream 4 News Now on your TV for free with the KXLY Plus app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Foothills Mazda. Sunday. What happened? I fell into some kind of trap. It's the rookie crossover event. We're going down. Rosalind did this. She's a serial killer. Here comes the feds to help. To turn I have been preparing for this my whole life. I do love a bargain. Murder me to save her. It's time. The rookie crossover event begins Sunday on ABC. My husband has diabetes. Even with health insurance, we're having a hard time affording our medications. Thankfully, we have Patty Murray fighting for us in the U.S. Senate. She kept at it till Congress finally lowered the cost of prescription drugs. And capped insulin for seniors at $35 a month. Now we'll save thousands every year. We know when Patty is back in the other Washington. She is working for us. I'm Patty Murray, and I approve this message. Spokane and North Idaho's country leader. It goes like one. The big 99.9 Coyote Country. Oh, life, we have faith that this foe can be conquered. We promise to focus our best minds on making you well. Be brave. Be hopeful. You couldn't be in better hands. Providence, we see the life in you. This is another one of those surprise medical bills you get in the mail. I've gotten them. You've gotten them. I'm Kathy McMorris Rogers. With inflation crushing our families, we need to put a stop to these. I support requiring hospitals, insurers, and doctors to disclose their prices so you can know the real cost and can shop around for the best care. 
I approve this message because no one likes surprises, especially this kind. Welcome back. In that first segment, we featured some teams that are going to be going to the playoffs. Now to some that they got to win these last couple weeks and then get some help in order to get in. Well, let's get out to the valley where we had Ridgeline taking on University. Ridgeline just looking for their first win of the season at this point. Titans on the move in the third quarter. Caleb, Caleb Walcott throws the deep ball to Shane Skidmore for the big gain into Falcons territory. After a penalty, the Titans are going to be looking to throw again. Walcott on the move, rolls out, and his pass is going to be deflected here. Heads up move by Peyton Walcott for the touchdown. Oh, my goodness. And Ridgeline can't believe what they just saw. Unfortunately for Ridgeline, they're just trying to get anything going. Landon Gardner's going to be sacked by Cohen Fisher of U High. It's all Titans tonight. Fourth quarter, and then they're on the drive again. Walcott's going to throw it to Trey Buchanan. He's going to lean his shoulder in for the touchdown as they go on to win this one, getting their third of the season, 39-20. to 20. Now, let's head up to Union Stadium for the day game here. We had uh, East Valley taking on Rogers. Rogers, the home team up there. First quarter, Isaiah Thomas going to take the handoff and find a nice little hole for the first down to put the Pirates inside the red zone there. A couple of plays later, it's going to be Ronald Warwick the fourth. Takes the pitch, shows off some nice little footwork and balance to cut up field. He's going to be met at the goal line by a series of East Valley defenders. No problem, he's got that push from his line. He's into the end zone. And we got our first touchdown of the game. Later in the quarter, though, Knights punting. It's going to be Orlando Moore going back to return it. He's going to muff it, though. Oh, no, and just give it right back to the Knights. They got beautiful field position. Can they do anything with it? Well, on fourth down and goal, Titan Nesbitt is going to go and come up a few yards short of the goal line, so they have to turn it over on downs. Later in the quarter, Knights still on offense trying to make something happen. Diesel Wilkinson decides to go deep, but Aaron Kinsey there for the interception to set up the Pirates beautifully. Just a tough day for East Valley. Not a whole lot of offense. and They have an explosive one. But very difficult. Rodgers earning their second win on the season. Stay with us. Sign up for breaking news alerts with the 4 News Now app. At 4 News Now, we believe you should expect more from local news. Our team is committed to a community conversation and bringing you information you need when and where you need it. Numerica believes in and supports that mission. I met Chris through a phone call. He was talking to me about his landscaping company and he was looking to get some financing. What I like about Numerica is when it comes to decision making, it's right down the hall and we're able to meet his needs within a month. You hear stories every single day of people being mugged or shot. I've been accosted by homeless people and drug addicts. It is absolutely not safe. We're lifelong Democrats. I have voted for Patty Murray many times. At least five times. But I just can't do it this time. We're voting for Tiffany Smiley. Vote Tiffany Smiley. Tiffany Smiley is the right person for the job. She gives me hope. I'm Tiffany Smiley, and I approve this message. The nonstop sirens. This is why you don't vote for Patty Murray. Never used to be like this. Trends come and go, but luxury's always in style. Now's your chance to buy beautiful Care Stand flooring at a price you can afford. During National Care Stand Month, you can save on Care Stand flooring. Elevate your decor with the designs and quality of Care Stand carpet, or choose from Care Stand's Luxcraft luxury vinyl tile collections. Don't miss your chance to live beautifully with Care Stand. Hurry in now to Skelton's Carpet One in Lewiston. You like to buy a vehicle for $20? Well, this Saturday, you can at all three Cal locations as they celebrate their 20-year anniversary by flipping a coin, heads or tails, to see who gets to buy a vehicle for 20 bucks. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. Get ready to vote with 4 News Now for the people coverage. What do you want to know about this year's ballot? Send your questions to KXLY.com. We'll get answers now until Election Day. That's what we mean when we say expect more. See breaking news in your area or have a story idea? Contact 4 News Now. Well, can't do better than that on uh, mid-October weekend, mid-70s and sunshine. That is nice. Mm. Well, I want to take a quick moment to congratulate the Honorable Jeremy T. Schmidt 
He was sworn in as Superior Court Commissioner just tonight. You can see him here. Take a look at this picture. He's taking the oath of office. The Honorable Judge Julie McKay was the presiding judge, and then he officially received the robe. His two daughters helping his niece as well, helping him get situated there. Uh, working in the direction of a judge, court commissioners assume many of the same powers and duties of a superior court judge, if you're wondering what a commissioner does. So congratulations to him. And in classic Schmidt family tradition, well, I don't know if it's a tradition, but they all went back to the ranch and uh, cooked up a hog. <laughs> well, hopefully we don't have to ever see him do his job, you know, person to person, right? From we'll the audience. From the yeah. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Congratulations.